The year was 2008. The world was grappling with the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Major banks were collapsing, stock markets were in freefall, and millions of people lost their homes and jobs. Foreclosures are up over a thousand percent. The entire crisis triggered by the US housing bubble sent shockwaves around the world. The red everywhere essentially, down by four, five percent. Revealing how interconnected the world's economies really are. However, whilst the West was struggling to climb out of a recession, one country has defined all odds. China. Since then, whilst the US was busy dealing with financial regulations and economic reforms, China was experiencing one of the largest real estate booms in history. New cities were built seemingly overnight, massive infrastructure projects were launched, and the Chinese economy grew at breakneck speed. Fast forward to today and things are looking very different. The real estate sector which once fueled China's growth is now a ticking time bomb. What's happening in China right now could spark the next global financial crisis, and this time the consequences may be even bigger. To understand how we got here, we need to rewind and look at how China's real estate boom took off. Over the last two decades, China's rapid urbanization has been staggering. Millions of people moved from rural areas into the cities, seeking better jobs, higher wages, and a modern lifestyle. To meet this growing demand, the government issued massive infrastructure projects, from roads and airports to entire new cities. Developers began building at unprecedented pace. From 2009 to 2020, China's urban population grew by over 300 million people. That's the equivalent of building a city the same size as New York every year for 20 years. And it wasn't just housing, the whole economy was geared towards real estate. In fact, real estate and construction now make about 30% of China's GDP. What a great success story, hey? Well, unfortunately, this is where things start to turn south. Much of this growth was driven by speculation. Developers weren't just building homes for people to live in, they were building massive ghost cities, entire neighborhoods where lights never came on. As the expected demand for these cities never came. The sad reality is that people were buying these houses not to live in, but as investments. Hope and sell them at a higher price later. Sounds extremely scary if the demand never materialises, eh? Fast forward today and the cracks are visible for all to see. Across China, there are countless ghost cities, vast stretches of high-rise apartments with no one living in them. Construction projects are being abandoned midway, leaving behind eerie half-finished buildings, developers are running out of cash and home buyers are losing confidence in the market. At the end of 2023, home prices in China dropped to their lowest point in nearly a decade. Not a good sign. One of the biggest warning signs that we've seen recently was the collapse of Evergrande in 2021. China's Evergrande. 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 One of China's largest property developers had over 300 billion in debt an amount so staggering that it has sent shockwaves across the whole Chinese financial system. And while Evergrande may have been the biggest domino, it's far from the only one. By mid-2023, it was reported that about 40% of Chinese developers had defaulted on their offshore debt. The collapse of these property giants is not just a local issue, it's rippling across the whole entire financial system. Sounds very 2009 s to me. This is where things are even more serious. Major banks around the world are starting to get nervous about their exposure to Chinese real estate debt. According to the Bank for International Settlement, global banks have nearly 1.8 trillion, yes trillion, of exposure to China. And it's not only Chinese banks that are at risk here. Big names like Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, Standard Charter, Citi, HSBC and JP Morgan have significant exposure to China's economy, including its real estate sector. Many of these banks are now starting to set aside provisions for potential losses as Chinese property developers struggle to pay back their debts. HSBC recently reported that it has 3.2 billion in credit impaired commercial real estate loans to Hong Kong clients as of the 30th of June, 2024, up from 576 million six months earlier. This is no small issue. If these defaults continue to spread, we could see a cascading effect where not only Chinese banks, but also the global financial institutions start to struggle, just like in 2008 when Lehman Brothers collapsed. The interconnectedness of the global financial system means that a crisis in one sector can quickly spread to others. This could have a ripple effect across the whole entire global financial system. China is one of the world's largest economies and a significant slowdown there would hurt global trade, particularly for countries like Australia, Japan, Germany, who rely on Chinese demand for their exports. Financial markets could also take a hit. Many global investors have exposure to China, whether that's through stocks, bonds, or real estate investments. If property values plummet and Chinese developers can't pay their debts, 
we could see a sell-off in the global markets, triggering a broader financial crisis. Sound familiar? It should. When Lehman Brothers collapsed in 2008, it marked the beginning of a global financial crisis. We've had a historic day on Wall Street. Lehman Brothers, the 158-year-old firm, filed for Chapter 11 protection in U.S. Bankruptcy Court today. In 2008, the housing market collapsed under the weight of bad debt and speculative investments. Now spreading throughout the U.S. economy. The system's not designed to function in an environment where house prices are going down. Banks were over leveraged and the ripple effect of that collapse was felt worldwide. The global financial crisis that followed left millions unemployed, destroyed trillions of dollars and wealth and took years to recover from. The system had stopped. China's situation today bears some striking similarities. Both booms were driven by cheap credit and over leveraged institutions. In both cases, financial institutions assumed that property prices would keep rising forever. And just in like 2008, China's real estate sector has become too big to fail. The Chinese government have been trying to manage the situation. They've introduced policies to cool down the property market, like limiting how much developers can borrow and tightening restrictions on speculative buying. But many experts believe that these measures might be too little too late. If the real estate bubble bursts, the consequences may be devastating for China and the global economy. Home buyers are afraid of uh, not getting the home that they paid for. The problems China have now are deep-seated structural ones. I think the consensus is already that for China, the property sales may not go back to yesterday. To me, the question isn't if China's real estate market will collapse. It's when and how bad the fallout will be. Unfortunately, this isn't the only potential crisis that we're also facing right now. To throw salt into the wound, there's the other looming problem that might be going global. How much do you think you can buy this for? 13 cents. The snag is, it comes with at least $800 million of debt. It's the sort of thing that's happening a lot right now. Whilst China's housing bubble grabs the headlines, it's important to recognize that commercial real estate around the world is also facing a very precarious situation. Offices, shopping centers, hotels, and industrial spaces are all losing value fast. It's the biggest real estate crisis since 2008. One of the biggest challenges in commercial real estate has been the dramatic shift in how we work. Landlords weren't counting on what came next. The World Health Organization has declared the coronavirus a global pandemic. The pandemic has triggered a massive shift to remote work and hybrid working models, and many companies are realizing that they don't need as much office space as they did before. In cities around the world, office buildings are sitting empty. In New York, office vacancy rates reached a staggering 22% in 2003, the highest since nearly 1990. Over in San Francisco, vacancy rates have been skyrocketing to nearly 30% as tech companies downsize or shift to permanent remote work. London, one of the largest financial hubs in the world, has also seen vacancy rates rise to over 17%. This means that across the globe, many office buildings are no longer generating the rental income that investors and banks expected. To make the situation even worse, a wave of corporate layoffs and cost-cutting measures have been sweeping their way through most industries. Big companies like Meta, Google and Amazon have all announced layoffs in the past year and are pulling back on their real estate needs. For example, Amazon recently paused the construction of its second headquarters in Virginia, a project that was expected to inject billions into the local economy. These kinds of moves signal a major shift in demand for office space. So what does this mean for the broader market? The value of commercial real estate in the US dropped by more than 15% in 2003, according to Green Street Advisors. In Europe, cities like Paris, Frankfurt and Berlin have also seen significant declines. Investors are pulling back from the sector and it's creating a downward spiral where property values are falling and landlords are struggling to fill empty offices. It definitely isn't looking good, especially as many financial companies, including pension funds, have exposure to commercial real estate. The construction industry isn't looking great either. Over the last week, ISG, a major global construction company and fit out firm with over 2.2 billion in revenue collapsed in the UK. This is potentially a sign of what's to come. And this is where it gets really concerning. Banks and investors are deeply tied to the commercial real estate sector. Much of the financing for these properties comes from loans and bonds often packaged into products known as Commercial Mortgage Backed Securities, CMBS. In simple terms, these are securities packed by pools of loans on commercial properties, including office buildings, hotels, malls, and industrial warehouses. As these properties lose value and struggle to find tenants, their owners are having trouble paying back their loans. 
In 2023, the value of CMBS loans in default climbed to nearly 54 billion in the US alone. And this trend isn't confined to the US. The CMBS market is facing similar strains in Europe and other parts of Asia. Banks which have heavily financed these properties are now bracing for significant losses. According to a report by Morgan Stanley, US banks are at risk of losing between 500 billion to a trillion on commercial real estate loans by 2025 if the current trend continues. And it's not just smaller regional banks that are at risk of collapsing. Some of the world's biggest financial institutions have exposure to commercial real estate. JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs and Citigroup all have significant stakes in the sector. As interest rates have risen over recent years, it's harder for businesses to refinance or take out new loans whilst the value of these properties continues to fall, which is a double-edged sword. By the second half of 2023, UK banks had already written off 9 billion in bad commercial property loans and it's only getting worse. If developers and property owners continue to default on their loans, it could trigger a wave of losses for banks, pension funds and insurance companies, many of whom have poured billions into the commercial real estate investments. The danger here is that the collapse of commercial real estate could become a systemic risk, much like the subprime mortgage crisis. Back then, it was over leveraged homeowners who couldn't afford to pay their mortgages. Today, it could be over leveraged property developers and landlords who can't pay back their loans. As property values decline, we could see a chain reaction where banks, investors and even consumers are hurt by the fallout. So we have a truly precarious global situation on our hand between China real estate bubble and the growing crisis in commercial real estate around the world. We're looking at sectors that have become deeply entangled with global finance. And just like we saw in 2008, when one domino falls, other tend to follow. Now, if you want to know how you can protect and also grow your assets in the next recession, watch this video here. Likewise, this video here is talking about the alarming indicators that we're currently experiencing. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more insights on the global economy, finances and the forces shaping our world. Also, leave a comment below on your thoughts, whether it could be the China real estate, commercial real estate or something else that plunges the world into a global economic crisis.